obviously, you know, the very latest Arizona's in, I would assume ASU is going to follow. What does this mean for both schools moving forward um, whenever this is announced that they could possibly be joining the Pac-12? Yeah, look, I think uh, like anything in life, it really just came down to do- dollars and cents. Uh, it was pretty obvious that the Pac-12 could not even come close to matching the deal that the Big 12 has with Fox and ESPN. It's not only that it's uh, at least $10, $12 million less than the Big 12 when you look at the Pac-12's proposed media deal, but it also has to do with subscription tiers. In other words, you really have to have good ratings. You have to have a good amount of subscribers to actually even come close somewhat to the Big 12 numbers. The Big 12 uh, can have... uh, Ratings that are maybe less desirable, but that's guaranteed money from both Fox and ESPN. So uh, for the obvious reason that it was just going to be much more lucrative uh, to be in the Big 12 than the Pac-12, uh, that's what drove Arizona to, uh, to join that conference. ASU is lagging uh, a little behind, and I don't think uh, we're going to hear an announcement by the end of the weekend concerning ASU. But if all goes well, uh, I think we're going to hear an announcement uh, next week. Uh, same thing with Utah, but U of A is uh, definitely uh, uh, running at warp speed. And uh, all of the reports just be- before you and I talked are indicating that uh, there's definitely going to be an announcement tomorrow that U of A has officially joined the Big 12. Again, uh, if you're an ASU fan and a Utah fan too, you hope that you hear uh, your names called uh, sometime early next week. What's the hold of? Is ASU dragging their feet? Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, really, really comes down to uh, it's it's kind of ironic because uh, back in the, I guess, what, uh, mid to late 70s, it was ASU that actually dragged University of Arizona to the then uh, Pac-8 to form to form the Pac-10. Now, really, the opposite is happening where it's actually University of Arizona that it's uh, dragging Arizona State or at least trying to drag them uh, in, in the, into the Pac-12 and, I, and into the into the Big 12. Sorry. So I just think that uh, hesitancy by uh, Arizona State is why the Big 12 is not moving as fast on them as they are on Arizona. Arizona basically has uh, made in uh, very clear terms. Uh, we are ready to go uh, to, um, to the Big 12. Uh, Michael Crow, ASU's president, has always been a huge proponent of the back, uh, Pac-12 and explicitly really uh, defended uh, former commissioner Larry Scott that I don't think it would be too harsh to say that really drove this conference uh, to the ground, especially when it when it came to the media rights uh, deal or lack thereof. Uh, the new commissioner uh, simply could not uh, uh, clean up the mess uh, that that, uh, that did ensue. So I guess I'm not surprised that ASU was kind of humming and hawing, but I do know that uh, the Board of Regents, who is meeting right now as we speak in executive session, also met uh, um, two nights ago. And Arizona told the Board of Regents that we are ready to move to the Big 12 and we are more than happy to take Arizona State with us. And I think that back in that meeting two two nights ago, Arizona State really didn't show a big measure of willingness to follow Arizona, but uh, maybe Michael Kaur just had to sleep on it, so to speak, because on Wednesday he was was singing a whole different tune. But nonetheless, that tune is not resulting in a speedy process for Arizona State to join the Big 12 Conference, uh, unlike Arizona, which, again, I fully expect uh, sometime uh, Friday afternoon at the latest uh, that Arizona would uh, join the Big 12 officially. How did the Pac-12 fail? Oh, this is kind of a sad day, I think, for everyone who's followed ASU in Arizona for a long time. When this announcement comes out, we all expect it's going to happen here you know, relatively soon speaking, but this is a sad day. And, but how did this conference fail? How did we get to this point where this conference was once upon a time at some of the best teams in college football now is almost worth nothing compared to the other power five schools, other conferences here in this country. Well, look, I mean, I don't want to harp on the legacy or the poor legacy, I should say of Larry Scott, but he really just set up the landscape for disaster when he had the opportunity to have the Pac-12 network partner with uh, with ESPN to, to bear some of the costs. And really, I would say also just up the production value altogether when he chooses not to take that route, when he just has extreme overhead, having a very expensive building in downtown San Francisco rented. I mean, I used to know the figures, but they were just absolutely astronomical. I mean, Larry Scott was great in spending other people's money. I mean, he, he definitely cornered the market. Uh, you know, when when it came to that. So I just feel that he just created 
uh, such a faulty infrastructure when it came to media rights deal that it just really severely hurt the, hurt the Pac-12. And I think that Pac-12, I think more than any Power 5 conference out there, really has to be careful on how it manages its media rights. And if a, a media entity like ESPN, which back then is in a much, much better uh, uh, situation than they are right now, we obviously heard about the mass layoffs of some of the greatest uh, on-air talent, if they're willing to uh, uh, lend a hand and help you really figure out uh, the media rights deal, really take a lot of the cost off of your plate, uh, to basically thumb your nose at them is just absolutely ridiculous. I think it also just comes down to that the Pac-12 does not, on average, generate the ratings definitely not of the SEC and the Big Ten, but I think also pales in comparison on average to the ACC and Big 12. So when you are just really just running uh, your, your production um, in, in-house and, again, not letting ESPN uh, really help uh, um, bear the cost, uh, you know, you're, you're definitely really in a dis, uh, disadvantage compared to the other conferences. Once the LA schools left with the number one media market uh, in the country, you're definitely not going to get a, a good a, a good media rights deal. Uh, you know, and look, and let's let's uh, just also point out, it's not just Arizona that's leaving the conference. University of Washington is having a meeting uh, l- later on tonight, and there were reports just a few hours ago that the Big Ten is aggressively pursuing Oregon and Washington. So everybody's really jumping ship. And uh, it is disappointing that Arizona State is really dragging their feet, but you really have to ask for who, for what? I mean, when you have just one school after another, after another, leaving the conference, if you're Arizona State and Utah for that matter, and you have a Power Five conference in the Big 12 that is willing to accept you, when you know you're going to get a media deal, which like I said, even in the worst case scenario is going to be $10 million uh, per year, you really have to grab that. So it is disappointing that uh, those two schools, unlike Arizona, um, have been have been really hesitant. But again, maybe it's just a matter of uh, Arizona State fans have to wait just a few more days. But trust me, it definitely sticks in the craw that their arch rival town south uh, is already moving at, at warp speed. And by this, uh, and in a matter of matter of twelve hours from now or so, they're going to have everything signed, sealed, and delivered. All right, say it with me. Welcome to Mountain America Stadium, home of the Sun Devils in the Big 12 Conference. Yeah, and I know that a lot of ASU fans, that did not sit well for them. But look, you and I, as media members, as beat, as beat writers, we're obligated to say that. And that's fine. Trust me, there's worse things in life that, that you can incur than calling Modern America Stadium. But for Arizona State, a school that is not flushed with cash, this was absolutely the right move to do. And a lot of the fans that do complain about this naming rights deal are the ones that also complain, well, why doesn't Arizona State have enough money to do this or enough money to do that? Well, look, guys, I mean, it really, it, it really comes down to uh, needing the funds to achieve everything that you want to achieve and really keep keep up with the Joneses, which, uh, as we know, in the world of the NIL, uh, keeping up with the Joneses is at a whole different level than it was just two, uh, two three years ago. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to take a little while, again, for media members like you and I t- to have that name roll, roll off our tongue. ASU fans are going to call it Sun Devil Stadium uh, from, from now until forever. And, and, and that's fine. But it really was a good move for Arizona State. And honestly, Cav, I mean, you know, you've been in the Valley a long time like myself. This naming rights for, for the stadium is something that's been talked about for years and years and years. And everybody thought when the final renovations of Sun Devil Stadium uh, were completed some six years ago, that the naming rights was going to be announced in concert. Uh, with the uh, new Sun Devil Stadium uh, being uh, open. So, yeah, maybe it took a little uh, longer. Seems like everything in Tempe just takes a little longer than it should, but uh, better late than never for uh, the naming rights uh, to come through and for that extra cash that Arizona State needs uh, so dearly. And maybe better late than never that they're going to join the Big 12 uh, and uh, join uh, join Arizona and really just get off a sinking ship. You hate to say it. I mean, I, I like the Pac-12 just like anybody else out there. But uh, the reality right now is just staring you in the face that you really need to go to the greener pastures because the pastures are definitely greener, pun intended.